The accused will stand. I want to make my position clear. The verdict in this case has been taken by the four jury officers. But I would like to establish, as a matter of record, that I find myself in agreement with them. After due deliberation, they have found Colonel Forster guilty of the charge as stated. Under Article 183, the sentence is specific. The execution was fixed for 1,200 hours the 19th of next month. Any appeal must be lodged within 14 days. Freeman left? Yes, sir, a couple of hours ago. Shall I contact him? No, that's all right. I'll call him at home. Freeman. Alec. Oh, don't you ever sleep. Hope I didn't wake you up. Oh, sure. Listen, Alec. There's a few things I want to check. Now, first of all... Hold it. What is it? What's wrong? Don't say anything. I've got an E-alarm. I'm fine, Alec. It's a bugging device. Somebody's out to get us, Alec. I've got a pretty good idea who it is. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Scott. We'll go straight through. But I'm afraid there's a... It's all right. Just show us where we sharpen our knives. Oh. I'm sorry, sir. Now don't worry, Miss Scott. Stopping runaway trains is not part of your job. Straker, this is a most unpleasant surprise. Yes, I'm sure. You know Jackson, of course. Of course. The eyes and ears of the world. Commander. Colonel Freeman. I'd shake hands, but you know how it is. I can't bear to touch anything slippery. Well, now we've dispensed with the pleasantries. I presume this is not just a social call. Alec? Yours, I believe. Yes. Standard Mark IV, bugging device, range about three miles. Planted in my car. Why? Two reasons. One, to test your security. And the real reason? 
Two days ago, we had to squash a press report. It concerned a skydiver's rendezvous with a supply ship. It named the exact position and time. We had to go right to the top to get a suppression notice. Yes, it would have been uh, unfortunate for Skydiver to have surfaced and been greeted by a boatload of reporters and photographers. Is this some kind of a sick joke, Henderson? You have got yourself a major security breach. You'd better believe me. We've checked. The information was never circulated. It's specific to Shadow HQ under the studio. To put it bluntly, someone you know, work with every day, is a security hazard. Just give us the details. We'll find out who it is. If you don't, we will. It's been very nice dealing with you, Mr. Foster. Well, let's hope it works out. Oh, don't worry, it will. I promise you, I wouldn't have let Diana here sign the contract if I hadn't thought she had a great future. You know, one day your studio is going to thank me. This is just the start of our long, friendly relationship. Well, don't forget the contract is subject to the director's approval. Oh, of course. But I'm sure we can come to some arrangement, Mr. Foster. We can help each other. If you know what I mean. Henderson was right. We've got a problem on our hands. It's a pretty frightening experience, walking around out there, knowing that somebody you've known for years has sunk just about as low as you can get. But who is it? coded message to Skydiver, the one that was leaked. Authorized and sent by Colonel Foster. Hi. How's it going? Oh, great. More to making movies than people think. I'm learning something new every day. Yes, that happens to most of us. I want to talk to you. Sure. I mean now. Get rid of the crew. OK, boys, take an early lunch. I'll leave the machine running, will you? I want to see the rest of those shots. Are you certain? Right. Right, I'll check it out. Yes, I'll tell him. Close the door. You transmitted this three days ago. Yeah, but this is, uh... Hadn't we better go to your office or something? Worried about security? Maybe I feel just as secure right here. Did you transmit that message? Well, yes. I believe I outrank you, Foster. Yes? Yes, what? Yes, sir. That's better. Let's keep it that way. Look, what's all this about? Just answer my questions. Now, who else knew about the skydiver transmission? Well, I did mention it to Alec Freeman. You gave him exact position, details, time? No, sir. Did you talk about it to anyone else? No, sir. And how is it? that this information, which you say you told no one, got into the hands of a newspaper. A newspaper? Yes, giving the exact time and position of Skydiver's rendezvous with the supply ship. Just don't understand. Neither do I. Straker. I just had Henderson on the line. There's been another security leak. It concerned a routine flight from Moonbase. Who planned and authorized it? Foster. Thank you, Alec. I 
don't get it. How about an explanation? Explanation? Explain what? What do you think I've done? I'm not thinking anything. I'm interested in facts. Well, I'm sorry. I just don't know how I can help you. Well, this whole thing's ridiculous. Ridiculous? Maybe you'll think a military court is ridiculous. A military court? When I tell Henderson the position, the outcome is obvious. And you'd better consider this. Shadow is run as a military organization. We're at war. You realize the penalty for espionage. I convene this court martial by the authority invested in me under Article 183 of our Charter. I must remind you that as of now, everyone in this room is under oath to speak the truth. Prosecuting officer may proceed. The accused, Colonel Paul Foster, is indicted under Section 8 of Shadow Security Regulations. I intend to show that he and he alone is responsible for and therefore guilty of the worst crime that can be perpetrated against our organization, espionage. The defense forgoes his right to speak at this time. Very well. The prosecuting officer will proceed. My first witness, Lieutenant Ford. You are Lieutenant Keith Ford, and you're a senior operative in shadow control. Yes, sir. Do you recognize uh, the apparatus on the table beside you? Yes, sir. It's a standard code and transmit device. Like the one used in shadow control? Yes. Will you... Will you tell us how it works? The primary circuits are a series of electro-scanners positioned in series. Lieutenant, we'd be grateful if you'd keep the explanation as simple as possible. Yes, sir. The information is inserted here. I see. In what form is this information? Handwritten on a standard input docket. Like this? Yes. Uh, but you say the message or whatever is handwritten, it seems an antiquated method in this, uh, this electronic age. It's one of the best security checks we have. This device is programmed to scan the card and compare it with standard samples. It will only accept genuine authorized input. So, for example, if I wrote a message for transmission? It would be scanned and rejected, as would a forgery. I see. Whose handwriting is the coder programmed to accept? Commander Straker's, Colonel Freeman's, and Colonel Foster's. And Colonel Foster's. I see. The information is then coded and transmitted automatically. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, Lieutenant, what happens to the input card? It's destroyed inside the coder. But a record is kept of the input. Yes, in the coder's memory bank. So that if you, uh, for example, wanted to, Lieutenant, you could check the content of a transmission. Yes, sir. And so could anyone else in the control room at the time. Yes, anyone. Thank you. Just how could you check the content of the transmission? You select the relevant number on these keys and the information is printed out. On another card similar to this? Yes, sir. But uh, isn't it printed out in code as it was transmitted? 
And isn't it necessary to use a computer run to decode it? When was the last computer run of this kind? About two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And the transmissions concerned in the security leak were both sent within the last five days. That's all, Lieutenant. Will Captain Waterman come forward, please? Captain Lou Waterman, at present commanding officer skydiver. I just one question, Captain. Did you know the contents of the orders uh, concerning the supply ship rendezvous transmitted to your submarine by Colonel Foster? No. Could you explain why, Captain? Well, until we receive confirmation, the message remains uncoded in our computer memory. Is this a standard procedure for security reasons? Yes. So neither you nor any of your crew could have leaked the information? No. Would you mind speaking up, Captain? No. Thank you. No questions. Sure about this? Certain. I've seen it myself. It's an open set. Well, that's just great. Set up the reverse. Keep it fairly low. Where will you be? I'm going to see Ed Straker. He's supposed to be the head of this studio. Straker, Commander in Chief, Shadow Operations. Commander Straker, is Colonel Foster a friend of yours? He's an officer serving under my command. But is he also a friend? Not in the sense you mean. This comrade, is he guilty of espionage, a traitor, a spy? In your opinion, of course. You mean my opinion as a man, or as Colonel Foster's commanding officer? Why not to give us the benefit of both answers, Commander? Very well. As a man, my opinions are private, therefore no concern of this hearing. As Colonel Foster's superior officer, I'm interested in facts, not guesses. No more questions. Colonel Foster is a comparatively new member of Shadow. Yes. And you authorized his acceptance? Yes, that's correct. On what did you base your decision? On the basis of the physical, psychiatric, and computer tests. On his past record as an Air Force pilot, civilian pilot, and on my judgment. He had security clearance? Naturally. Is this a copy of the security report on Colonel Foster? Yes, it is. Uh, Commander, would you read out aloud, please, uh, the last paragraph? <clears throat> Colonel Foster is considered to be an excellent security risk, and we recommend Class A clearance. Thank you, Commander. Commander, mm, you will see that... Uh... I was one of the examining officers on that report. Yes, your signature is here. Well, it only goes to show that we can all make mistakes. Don't you agree? Thank you, Commander. I think this may be an appropriate time to adjourn. We'll resume at 1400 hours. Some air. Uh, excuse me, sir. Carl Mason wants to see you. He said it was very urgent. Not now, Miss Eden.
defending officer may proceed. So far, the facts to emerge from this hearing are that Colonel Foster was indeed in possession of the said classified material. But there has been no proof whatsoever that he passed on that information to any outside persons. I therefore do not intend to take up the time of the court with character references for the accused. His record speaks for itself. I call Colonel Foster. Foster, Paul J, 804. Colonel, are you guilty of the charges as stated? Not guilty. Have you ever passed on classified information to any unauthorized person or persons? Never. Thank you. Colonel Foster, would you say that you have a nervous disposition? You're the psychiatrist. Please answer my question. Normally, no. I'm not a nervous person. Under extreme stress, you stay reasonably calm. Reasonably. It's part of your profession, isn't it? And part of your training to remain calm in abnormal conditions. Yes. Colonel Foster. Are you nervous now? And where's all this getting us? Please answer my question. Are you nervous now? Why should I be? Yes or no? Answer my question. No. You do surprise me. You stand accused of giving classified information to the press, endangering the security of shadow and the lives the lives of everyone in it. I object. My client is being deliberately baited. Overruled. This is not the civil court of law. We're after the facts, the truth. Continue. Colonel Foster, did you or did you not violate section 8, paragraph 5 of the shadow security regulations? I did not. Then how do you account for the fact that the press got hold of this information? I don't know. I suggest you ask the press. And I suggest, Colonel Foster, that you're lying. I did not give classified information to any newspaper. All right, Colonel Foster. But uh, I have one last question. Here's a photostat of your personal bank account. $10,000 was paid in on the tens by an unnamed subscriber. Could you explain that, Foster? I can't. It's the first I've heard of it. Very convenient. What are you implying? Implying? I am stating that the money was payment for espionage, the going price for a traitor, the rewards of a spy. I am stating that you sold shadow secrets to the press for the sum of $10,000. I tell you, I know nothing of how that money got there. It's a plant. Someone's trying to frame me. Perhaps a little nervous now, Foster. Well, this whole thing is ridiculous. He's twisting the facts. I really must protest. My client has again been deliberately baited. Order. I want order here. It's a pack of lies from start to finish, and he knows it. All right, Foster. Where did that check come from? I don't know. I'm going to ask you just once more. Where did that money come from? I tell you, I don't know. All right. Alec, how can we find out about it? A Swiss numbered account? You tell me. My commanding officer, do you think I'm guilty? Whatever you say can't affect the decision now. 
I'd just like to know. All the evidence in that court martial says yes. But if you want a gut reaction, no. Colonel Freeman? Right. They're coming back in. They have found Colonel Forster guilty of the charge as stated. Under Article 183, the sentence is specific. The execution was fixed for 1,200 hours the 19th of next month. Any appeal must be lodged within 14 days. This court martial is closed. piece of tangible evidence. Foster was found guilty through a series of airtight negatives. Information was leaked to the press. Foster was the only one who knew that information. He told no one his word. And the coder transmitter is security proof. There must be some other explanation. Well, uh, it appears to be military. No. No, I can't give you the source. I just happened on it by chance. Yes. Yes, I certainly do that. And the uh, usual arrangement? Right. Anything you want, Colonel? No, thanks. Could be a long night. Shall I ask the doctor to get you something to help you sleep? No, thanks. I'll be fine. <laughs> No. Well, that's too bad. Because I didn't sleep at all. It's uh, Carl Mason, isn't it? Well, recognition at last from the big white chief. You'll have to excuse me. Listen, Straker. I've been trying to talk to you for three days. Everybody has problems. Some more important than others. Take your hand off me. Oh, no. I've telephoned you a dozen times. I've practically slept in this office. Now you're going to listen to me. Mason, I'm warning you. You say you got troubles? Here's another one you can add to your list. There's a security leak. Security leak? And I'm making a picture here. Perhaps you may recall. The whole thing hinges on a pulsed light system. New design. I hear a rival company are building a replica. Industrial espionage. Right. I'm giving you just 12 hours to kick Paul Foster out of this studio. What's Foster got to do with it? He's the one guy I discussed this system with. Where? Does that make any difference? Where did you discuss it? In his apartment. It's a pretty long shot. It's a pretty hairy coincidence. Mm-hmm. 
Anything? Nothing. Foster's not a fool. He would have run the standard check every week. What did Henderson have to say? He wasn't available. I don't know why I bothered to call him. He wouldn't be interested unless we come up with something concrete. Oh, you better reassemble that. Why bother? Foster isn't going to need it. Well, not much wrong with my appetite. Time's web arriving. 2.30. Don't worry, he's a good defending officer. He'll make the appeal stick. Yeah. Sure. Will I have some more coffee? I was almost sure. There's nothing here. Let's go. No, wait a minute, Alec. Now, when Foster was working, he'd sit here. And when Mason was here, say they'd driven over from the studio, arrived about 7.30. Now, what would Foster do? Environmental therapy. Let's check it again. Positive. Okay, Alec. Let's take this place apart. Get a group over here. Clever setup. Two audio transmitters and three miniaturized cameras. And all activated by the display lights. We found this on some waste ground about a mile away. Tape recorder. Yes, with a built in radio receiver. When this stuff starts transmitting, it receives and records the data. Then the contact comes along and picks up a tape. Let's find out where all this is made. Yes, sir. this place I do who are you I believe this is one of your gadgets maybe maybe not now look funny man miss get lost now you listen this is private property there are two ways you can play this singleton one is the easy way Joe What do you want? The name and address of the client who bought that electronic peeping tom. Hello, Colonel. How are they treating you? Great. I've drafted the appeal. It needs your signature. You're a psychiatrist, Jackson. Would you say Commander Straker has an artistic temperament? No, I don't think so. 
Then why would he have a display like this behind his desk? I've often thought about it. Maybe it soothes his nerves. What would you say is the strongest instinct in man? Love? Hate? Self-preservation? God! The targets can of force to 804. Alert groups 2 and 3. Pickup on Miss Jane Grant. Address 124 Eastern Avenue. You got that? Right. At the studio. Oh, and uh, put me through to General Henderson, please. Priority A. This I'm going to enjoy. All right, Streaker. You may have new evidence, but I've got something for you. Foster escaped 20 minutes ago. Groups two and three have been alerted. What? But you can't do that. Now listen. Foster knows a complete setup. He was found guilty of espionage. I'm not risking the whole organization for one man. My orders are to shoot on sight. But his apartment was bugged. Was it? It was his way of passing the information. It's going to take positive proof of innocence to convince me. We need an affidavit from that Miss Grant, and we need it fast. Here. Yes, sir. She's in your office. Thank you, Ford. I assume you have a very good explanation as to why I've been brought here. You are an industrial spy. It all sounds so sordid. You had an apartment bugged for sound and vision and belonged to Paul Foster. Did I? The electronics were supplied by a man named Singleton. He's told us everything. Then I suggest you send for the police. You know as well as I do, industrial espionage is not indictable. Then I suggest you have me driven home. This is an acoustic gun. 
I have heard of them. Oh, excuse the pun. I'm a desperate man, Miss Grant. Armed with a toy gun. If I place it against your ear and fire, the sound will pierce your eardrum. I'm also told that the brain suffers varying degrees of damage. Even if I believe, Dad, I don't believe that you're a desperate man. Believe it. Unless you sign a confession. Somebody is going to die. sign here. A signed affidavit. Get Henderson. It's too late. He just called. Foster's been shot. <laughs> to see him, Miss Scott. I'll see if he's in. I have someone to see you, sir. Then straight right in. Please go in. Thank you. Straker. It must be my year. This is your second visit. I'd like you to read this. When you find time between making up wisecracks. It includes a statement which absolutely clears Paul Foster. Statement? From an industrial spy. A Miss Grant. She was after information at the studio. Our stuff was incidental. Jackson. You are wrong, Jackson. Paul Foster was guilty of one thing. He worked nights at home. He wrote those orders to Moonbase and Skydiver while a couple of cameras in the wall were taking pictures. You can prove this. Does it matter? I only hope it keeps you awake nights thinking about it. Just a moment. You think I'm a pig-headed, cretinous lout, don't you, Straker? Foster was shot with an anesthetic bullet. Jackson's idea. Well, don't fall over yourself with gratitude. Just a moment. You think I'm a pig-headed, cretinous lout, don't you? You think I'm a pig-headed, cretinous lout, don't you? You think I'm a pig-headed, cretinous lout. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Let me see. 
Really very nice of you to ask us down, Mr. Mr. Foster. Is it? I just wanted to give you this. You did pay $10,000 into my account, didn't you? Well, yes, but no one can tell where it came from. You understand? Sure. When you came down for the screen test, I didn't know what you meant by we can help each other. But now you're right, I do understand only too well. Get yourself a new agent, kid. Oh, come on, don't be like that. Listen, you don't know how much that check nearly cost me. So get out of here while you can still walk. Foster! Hello. Where the devil have you been, out sunning yourself on some beach? Now, wait a minute. Please, no excuses. Believe it or not, this is a film studio. It has a one function. It's very simple. It's to make motion pictures. All right? Let's go. Oh. 